This video will discuss chapter 8-4, quadratic equations in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So we're going to start now, if you remember in the last lesson, we did not have a number in front of this x squared, or the number there was a 1. Okay, and so we are now going to start talking about what happens when there's a different number other than 1 here in front of the x squared. So it's going to be the same idea that we were using before, which is this x. Right? And so I'm going to now take this number times this number. If you remember before, it was 1 times that. Now it's going to be 7 times 4. And this is going to give me 28. And then i got to take this number that's in the middle, and it's going to be a positive 29 up there. So I'm looking for two numbers that when added together, I guess when multiplied together, give me 28. When added together, give me 29. And those numbers would be 1 and 28. So now I'm going to rewrite this equation breaking the 29 into a 1 and a 28. So this is going to be 7x squared plus 1x plus 28x plus 4. So I want you to see, before we move on, that really I've just rewritten this equation using these two numbers for my, for my 29. So the only reason I'm using this x is to get me these two numbers. Once I have this, I'm now done with this part. So if you remember in the last video, you could use these two numbers to get you the solution. It's not going to work this time. Okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm going to, similar to what we did a couple of lessons ago, I'm going to try to figure out what these two have in common and what these two have in common. So these two in common have an x. So I can factor out an x, and I'll be left with 7x plus 1. Whereas these two have a 4 in common, so when I divide out a 4, I am left with 7x plus 1. Now, what I see is that these have the x plus 1, in, or 7x plus 1 in common, and these have x, or I guess what's left over is the x plus 4. So my final factoring of this would be 7x plus 1 times x plus 4. And I want you to see that this was the x uh, you know, a little trick that we started with. Keep in mind that that was useful to get me to here. It was not useful getting me all the way to the final answer. All right, so that's one example of a problem. Let's take a look at a second type of problem. Okay, and so you'll notice that in this first example, everything was positive, right? Here, the middle number now is negative. So again, I'm going to create my x. I'll do it on this side just so you see that it doesn't matter which so I put this on, and this is going to be 3 times 20 gives me positive 60, and then in the middle I need a negative 17. So, it's going to get a little trickier now. I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me positive 60, yet when added together will give me a negative 17. And so one trick that we got to start to be comfortable with is that if this number is positive and this number is negative, then both of these, or sorry, both of these numbers would have to be negative. So I'm looking for essentially two negative numbers because when I multiply the two negative numbers, it will be positive. When I add the two negative numbers, it'll still be negative. So I'm looking for two negative numbers that will get me from, that multiply together give me positive 60, added together give me negative 17, and that would be negative 12 and negative 5. So I'm going to rewrite this now as 3x squared minus 12x minus 5x plus 20. So if you put these two together, I still got negative 17. So essentially all I did to get from this red step to this blue step was I rewrote this red equation or red expression with this part just looking like that. Negative 12 minus 5x is negative 17x. Okay, now what I'm going to do again is figure out what do these two have in common and what do these two have in common. Right? These have a positive 3. So, I guess a positive 3x, sorry. So this is going to be x minus 4. Okay, and now I know that I want this middle to be a negative, so a lot of times what some people may see here is if I take out a negative 5, instead of taking out a positive 5, right here, I'll take out the positive 5 and then I'll switch it in a second. So if I were to take out a positive 5, my problem is I would have x, uh, I'd have negative x plus 4, right? But I don't want negative x plus 4. What I want is x minus 4, and now is when you would use the negative 1 trick. So I multiply all of these by negative 1, and I would get myself to something looking like this. Or the other way that some people can see this is that 
if I take out a negative 5 instead of a positive 5, this divided by negative 5 will give me positive x. This divided by negative 5 will give me negative 4. And I now have my x minus 4s. They now have the x minus 4 in common, so I go x minus 4, and then 3x minus 5, right? Because I'm taking those. So that would be my answer there. All right, and then I want to show you one more example of how sometimes this doesn't totally work out. So you get a problem like this, and so I'm going to try to take these two numbers and multiply them together. I get negative 20, and I want to add together to get negative 3. So I'm thinking of the factors of negative 20. They would add together to give me negative 3. That would be negative 2, negative 10 times 2. I guess I'd have negative 20 and 1, and I would have negative 5 and 4. And these are my factors of 20 that when multiplied could give me a negative, and when added could give me a positive. These are the only three that would work. And so when I add these, this is negative 19. When I add this, I've got negative 8. When I add this, I've got negative 1. You'll notice none of them are negative 3. So this is usually where people start trying to use decimals or fractions, but you can't do that. And so I want you to think of a number, if you can imagine this as just a number, think of a number that has no factors other than itself and 1, and what you call that number, right? And so this expression we would say, like a number that has only factors of 1 in itself, this expression is prime. So at times it doesn't work. And I don't want you to fall in love with the prime idea, because a lot of times it's that people can't think of these two numbers so they think it's prime. Just because you can't think of the two numbers doesn't mean that they don't exist. But if you've gone through all the factors and none of them can get you there, then you have an expression that is prime. All right, and then one final example is what happens when you add the equal zero. So adding the equal zero is just going to basically add one extra step for us. All right, I'm going to take this, our shortcut that helped, or our organizational tool that helps us, which is the x. This is going to be negative 10, so they multiply to give negative 10 and add together to get 5, I'm sorry, to get 3. And so I'm thinking of the number 5. Uh, you know what, let's go this way. We'll go, this is going to be negative 2 and positive 5, sorry. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 2x plus 5x minus 5 equals 0. So remember that this is my x, right? So this is my 3x right here. Negative 2x plus 5x is my, my 3x. Okay, and I'm looking for what do these first two have in common? They have a 2x in common. So this is 2x times x minus 1. And then over here they have a 5 in common. And so this is 5 times x minus 1. And don't forget about the equals 0 part. Okay, now I'm going to take the x minus 1 and then the 2x plus 5. Okay, and I'm almost where I got to be, but now the, the additional step that I didn't have before is now this equals 0, which means that either this number equals 0 or this number e equals 0 if it's a multiplication problem equaling 0. So I just need to break this into two problems that equal 0. This one I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'll get 1. Over here I'm going to subtract 5. Right, so I got 2x equals negative 5 because I'm subtracting 5 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 2 and x equals negative 5 halves. So my answer, and again I can put this in the form of a set, is negative 5 halves and 1. All right, that's all we got for you on quadratic equations with the leading coefficient. Thanks very much for watching the video. Don't forget to do the problems on the bottom of the page. See you in class.